This is Amy and welcome to Become Your Own Favorite Chef. Today I'm going to share with you a recipe that my mother shared with me when I was younger. And these are called man catcher brownies. The title speaks for itself. But uh, it's not just men that love these brownies. You can make these for anybody and they'll be your best friend for life. You'll be the highlight of every party and potluck. So uh, I would really call these eat these brownies and fall in love with me forever brownies. Yeah, that fits. And I know that many of you think that I got my husband Drew because I'm like the smartest person on the planet and I'm hilarious and I'm so beautiful. Yeah, no, it was the brownies. So here's my secret. All right, first thing we need for this semi-homemade recipe is one stick of melted butter. I just placed this in a glass bowl for a minute and a half on high in the microwave. To that, you need a box of German chocolate cake mix. I know I said these were brownies. They end up being more like chocolate bars, uh, very similar to turtle bars, because we're gonna put in some caramel and nuts. To this mixture, you need about three ounces of uh, fat-free evaporated milk or just regular evaporated milk. But I try to make things healthy where I can. This is 12 ounces, so I'm going to pour about a fourth of it in there. That looks good. That's all you need for your brownie mix. Before I got this started, I turned the oven on to 350. And the process we're going to do here is we're going to cook half of this in a pan. Then when that's done, we're going to add melted caramel and chopped nuts and chocolate chips to the middle layer and then add the other half in patches on the top. It's so good. All right, the density should be really, really thick. And I'm gonna plop about half of this throughout. It's gonna seem really thin, but you want it really thin. Even if you have to use a little bit more than half, you want to use enough of this mixture that you do cover every bit of this pan. I've got a bowl of water over here so that when I mush this around, it doesn't stick to me too bad. So I'm going to get my hands wet and spread this throughout. Okay. It does not have to be pretty, just as long as everything is covered, because we're going to have a layer that covers this up anyway. So I'm going to stick this in the oven at 350 for seven minutes exactly. All right, we're going to get our caramel sauce ready. I've opened up 30 individual caramels. We're going to put these on medium-low heat. You're going to cook these slowly. You have no idea how many times I've burned these caramels because I tried to cook them too fast. So take time, be patient. And then we need another three ounces added to your caramels. So by the time this recipe's over, about half our can of 12 ounces should be gone. So that's the beginning of our sauce. I'm gonna sit here for, this usually takes, you know, nine, 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna slowly stir it. Make sure that my caramels melt evenly and that they don't burn, because this is the most important part of your recipe. Another part of the brownies we're gonna add after our brownies are cooked are any type of chopped nut. These are leftover roasted pecans from my salad that I made yesterday. I like about a handful because I'm not huge on having a lot of nuts in this recipe, but again, if you're a nut-loving person, add a couple handfuls. Either way, though, these need to be in pieces. If you don't have pecan pieces or walnut pieces, you can put them in a bag and chop them up like this. I'm just counting them with the meat mallet. Until they're just tiny, tiny little pieces. Like so. All right, it's been seven minutes for our brownies. 
You want them to be slightly puffed up. And our caramel sauce is done now. I've been stirring for about 10 minutes. And see how nice and smooth that is? That's perfect. All right, step two, assembling. We have our first half of our brownies baked. I'm gonna take my slightly cool, it's been a couple minutes since these came off the burner, caramel sauce. And I don't wanna drown this in caramel, but I definitely wanna put enough on the brownies that you get gooey caramel in every single bite. Make sure you get the edges. That's the perfect amount for me. Leaves me a little bit of extra to lick the spoon. Mm. All right. After that, take our crushed pecans or whatever nuts you chose. We're just going to sprinkle them evenly. I don't like too many nuts in mine, so I'm going to keep them about there, but feel free to add more. Next, I'm adding a couple handfuls of semi-sweet chocolate chips. You can use uh, milk chocolate if you like, but I find that the caramel is so sweet, it's a little too much. So semi-sweet is my choice. All right, this is the fun part. Get your hands really wet, and you're gonna make little patties of brownie batter, and just place them all over. You don't need this to be perfect. In fact, make a picture out of it. Spell happy birthday or something. Have a little fun with it if you want. Keep your hands wet or your palms will stick. You don't want everything to be covered up because part of the beauty is seeing all that caramel and nuts and chocolate chips. Make sure most of it does have a top. That's perfect. I know it doesn't look pretty now, but when this is done in seven minutes, it will be beautiful. So seven minutes back in the oven at 350 degrees. All right. It's actually been about eight or nine minutes. You really just have to watch. And what you're looking for is really puffy brownies. And when this cools off, we can cut in and eat. When your brownies are done and cooled, this is what they look like. Now when you cut in, wet your knife a little bit, because these are so gooey, it's really hard to not get your knife to stick. Mmm. Mmm. Very gooey. Perfect crust on the bottom, but really chewy, caramel, and chocolate chips and the nuts give another nice crunch at the top. It's just perfect. Hey Drew, I made your favorite brownies. I gotta go. Sit.